if you feel like you have gotten under Max Holloway's skin in the lead up to this fight? Mm, I never thought about that, to be honest, and I don't care. I will be in his game on this Saturday, that's for sure. You know, he's saying that uh, he was here earlier today and he feels that, you know, about this whole finger pointing story that you haven't earned that moment with him yet and you're just a co uh, copycat of Conor McGregor. I never ask him if I deserve that or not. I will be pointing to the ground since the first second of the fight. If he wants to stay with me in the middle, it's okay and prove that he's the real BMF. Uh, and if he decides to don't do that, it's okay too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a different way to finish him and take his head off. Um, I get the impression that Elliot Spore is not necessarily under your skin, but some of the things he says kind of confuses you more than annoys you. Would that be accurate? Yeah, I'm more confused about everything that he's saying, about uh, me not wanting to fight him, me getting forced to fight him. I, I, the dude just, I mean, he got me, he got me out here feeling like how he looked after my, my Gaethje fight, so it's crazy. Uh, I've noticed that in the lead up to this fight, you've had a BMF belt, but it's not here today. Did you bring it with you to Abu Dhabi? Uh, yeah, I have it with me. Did you decide that you deserve to be the BMF belt because he wasn't defending it against you, or why did you purchase that? For me personally, the, the, the opinion I have is that that belt was created for and because of George Masvidal, beside of him, no one is a BMF. But if someone has to have it, I prefer to have it. Do you get the impression, right, he's clearly a confident guy, he clearly believes in his skills, but do you think when he's talking about, oh, I'm going to fight for the lightweight title, then the welterweight title, and Max is going to be easier than Josh Emmett, do you think he believes what he's saying, or is he trying to sort of build himself up so he gets that confidence? Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know, bro. His mind is very interesting. I, I, I couldn't answer that question for you, to be honest, bro. Um, but if that's what it takes to be the best, the best version of himself come Saturday night, then so be it. You know, he can talk all that talk he wants because <coughs> at the end of the day, he's still got to see me in three days. Out of all the things he said, is the whole I'm going to point at the floor in the first 10 seconds thing the one that kind of makes you roll your eyes the hardest? Yeah, because it just makes no sense, you know. At the end of the day, to me, I, I, I don't think he deserves. You got you to earn that right. I don't think he deserves that right. With him being... Uh, I mean, you know, you know the guy that he's copycatting. This guy's a copycat. You know, down to the tattoos, to his aura, to the way he's approaching fights. The guy's a copycat, and you're, you're best friends with the guy he's following. So, uh, trying to copy. So, at the end of the day, I think you got to earn that moment. And uh, I believe he had that. He could have earned it with Josh Emmett in in their five one roar. Josh Emmett was trying to swing. If you guys can go back to that fight and watch what happened. When Josh Emmett was trying to swing, someone shot and someone hold someone down for the rest of the fight. So I think the moment needs to be earned. And he's just, he's just trying to steal stuff, you know? He's already trying to steal one person's aura and now he's trying to steal some, somebody else's thing. So it's just, it's amazing. Do you believe that your chances of winning this fight go up if it's about finishing him or if it goes the distance, can you match with him for the whole five rounds and match his pace? Uh, of course, I'm I'm ready, for, not for five rounds, to be honest. I'm ready for for 10 or 15 rounds, whatever he wants to do, I can, I can do it. Uh, but I, I don't think that the fight will, will go to the distance. I will finish him before that. If you knock out Alex Volkanovski and Max Holloway in one year, does that make you the best fighter this year? Uh, I, I don't know who takes that, that, that decision, but if they, they think that I'm the best fighter, I will be very grateful with that. If not, Alex is a great fighter too. He deserves to be the best fighter. You know? yeah, right here. He's clearly a good fighter, right? No one does that to Volkanovski if they're not a good fighter. But you, in your career, fought Aldo, you fought Conor, you fought Volkanovski. You fought the best of the best in this division's history. When you look at Ilya as a fighter, how does he rank up against those names? Or do you still think he's kind of unproven? I mean, he's an animal. He's good, you know. A, a lot of people forget that when he came into the UFC, he got right in as a, as a grappler and wrestler. That's what he was. And he came into the UFC, started knocking dudes out. His boxing is nice. As a fighter, you cannot be a hater and say he's not good, you know. Is he proven? He did what he had to do when he had to do it to get to the position he has. So there's no disrespect to that. But you get to see me come Saturday night, so 
That should be fun. Um, you've used the phrase that you're the new era of mixed martial arts quite often. Max, I, I asked Max, Max about that. He said, you know, you don't really do anything different. You punch, you kick, you wrestle, you do everything everyone else has done. So I guess, what exactly do you mean by saying that you are the new era of MMA? The, the way I applicate the techniques and the, and, and the skills to my opponent, the way I move uh, my head, the way I, the way I dominate the, the octagon, that's the, that's the difference. What, what uh, evolution do you see in Max Holloway in every fight? Maybe only in striking, but you don't see him getting better in wrestling or in the ground. You don't see him try, trying new things, only in the striking. This is what I'm talking about. I try to evolve the game all the time, not only in the striking, and with the wrestling, with the ground game, with everything. To kind of go off of that, you know, everyone talks about Max Holloway's boxing and he's the best boxer in the UFC and this. You know, he broke Justin Gaethje's nose right away with that spinning back kick. Uh, he hurt Anthony Pettis with the same kick. Do you think people are focused so much on his boxing that maybe they don't see everything else well that he does? Uh, in reality, he's a, he's a good strike. It's not only a boxer because calling himself so best boxer in the UFC is kind of shame, I think, because he's not the best boxer in the UFC. Uh, but he's a good striker. He has a lot of experience. He's very patient in, in, inside the octagon. But everyone is good when they can devol develop their they style inside the octagon and, and, and someone is not putting the pressure on him. So. On Saturday night, he's going to feel something that he never felt with, with any other opponents that he had in the past. The pressure he's going to feel with me, it's going to be completely different. So um, just going back to what you were saying about how Ilya is a beast and comparing him to your past opponents, you know, he keeps using this phrase like, I bring the, uh, the next evolution of mixed martial arts. That's what he's saying about himself. When you actually break it down, do you see things that he's doing differently that people weren't doing years ago, or is that just something you think he's saying to kind of build the fight? I mean, it's probably something to bring the fight, to build the fight, because uh, I don't think he's doing anything different uh, than, than, than people, you know? I mean, everybody strikes, everybody wrestles, everybody judos, Greco-Roman, whatever you want to call it. Everybody does this. He's a mixed martial arts, you know, and he's putting it together uh, pretty well for himself. But, I mean, like he's saying, this new generation, I'm, I'm only a couple of years older than him, so. And I've been, I've, I've been here, done that. Like I said, a lot of people keep forgetting how, how young I was, you know. Like I said, when I was, I think ESPN posted it. When I was his age, I had, like, all my title wins and title defenses already, so. That's just how that goes. Would you say you're the best boxer in the UFC? Uh, I don't like to take credits from anyone in, in, in the UFC because we have a lot of great fighters. And let's the people to decide that, right? Let's the people to call you the best boxer in the UFC. And last one for me, Diego Lopez is weighing in as the backup. You know, you've said respectful things about him. He said respectful things about you. Have you run into him at all in the hotel? No, I didn't see him, but he, he seems to be a good guy. The title fight aside and the hype around this fight, after UFC 300, there were a lot of you know journalists and fans, they kind of circled this fight as their most anticipated fight for the rest of the year, right after UFC 300. You guys weren't even booked yet, so do you kind of take that as a, like a, like do you take pride in that, that even though the fight wasn't booked, like people were like, John Jones has still hadn't fought yet, and you know Pereira hadn't done his thing yet, but people were still circling this fight as like the one that they wanted to see. For sure, for sure, man. When you when you your name is put up against guys like Alex Pereira and John Jones and people, you know, and, and these guys are still fighting. There was fighting this year, you know. There, there was gonna have fights this year, and when you put those names against our names, and they said this is the fight that everybody wants to watch, I mean. That's pretty amazing, you know. At the end of the day, I'm just stoked to be uh, to be talked about in that in that sense. Um, a lot of fighters are reluctant to speak out about their goals, what they want to do in these fights, and you've said it all. You want to be three division champion. You're going to knock out Max in the first round. All these things. Where does that confidence come from, and why are you not maybe as reluctant? as some other fighters to speak about what they, you feel is going to happen. They asked me what I want to achieve in the UFC and what was my, my, if I could like dream big. 
So uh, my answer was, I want to become a UFC three weight class world champion. And what makes me be so confident? The hard work I'm putting in and to know what I'm able to do inside that doctor. Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, I know you had an interaction with him yesterday. Does that kind of go how you thought it would be? You guys were respectful, you'd shake hands. I always respect Volk, always. Before the fight, after the fight, there was nothing personal. I was only fighting for my dreams. And this is the same thing what's happening this Saturday with Max. I have all the respect for him. He, he had, He's a great fighter. He has achieved many great things in the sport. Um, you can't take the credit from him. So I have learned many, many things from him. He called me a fan. Yeah, I followed his career. I've been a fan. How can you not be a fan of Max Holloway, right? So he's been a great example for me, but now it's my time to be that example for the new generation. And when Alex did his, Alex Volkanovski did his breakdown of this fight, he said that he's not sure that Ali can like fight through being uncomfortable with you. You kept using that word, like if it gets in the later rounds, Max can make this uncomfortable. Is that how you see the fight playing out? Like in the later rounds, you can kind of just kind of take him out of his element and make this fight uncomfortable? Yeah, I mean, we see what happens, you know. You never know. You never know what can happen. Your boy been uh, touching people on the right spot and been putting them down. So, you know, that, that that's always fun. And... Uh, at the end of the day, we see what happens. You know, I know he talked about his cardio. He's, he believed he has cardio, but most of the time, his cardio is outshining the, the opponent's cardio because he's hurting them early in their fights, you know? And um, the beautiful thing is, guys, I, would, I just cannot wait, man. I can't wait. It's going to be something special. Tune in uh, Saturday night. Also, to speak about, you mentioned the enemy's territory. This looks like a little bit enemy's territory because of the last couple of weeks you spoke with Islam and all the fighters from Dagestan who likes to fight here. Is it like a little bit of pressure or it's a motivation for you to, to fight in front of them there? Mm, not at all. No. no, no, man. This is not their territory. They are not from here, they are Russians. So I don't feel any pressure because of that. If you get this title back, will be more meaningful than the first time around, just given you know the time in between the title reigns and everything you've had to overcome to get back here? Never, never. Not, not I mean, I don't know for you guys, the way you guys look at my career, but personally, fighting all the a guy who I stood, uh, I stood idolize and what he's doing, the, the dude is still fighting, bro. What the hell? He looks, it does he age? I mean, I, I, I saw somebody talk, talking about how they might be lying on his age. And he's still moving like that. It's just crazy. And uh, to fight the king of Rio in Rio, to win it the way I did, uh, nothing's going to ever top that moment for me. Can we bring back the hex ties if you get the win here? Maybe. Maybe bring back the suits and the hex ties. Maybe. Never say never. Um, Shane, you say that you were a Max Holloway fan when you were young and mm -hmm. watching him while growing up and becoming the professional fighter. What kind of difference do you see from Max, for example, five, six years ago and Max today? Uh, that's the thing. I don't see any, any, any difference. He's the same Max Holloway that we have seen since, I don't know, 2020. <laughs> since I made my UFC debut, he, he's the same one. Uh, good striker, uh, very patient in the, in, in the octagon, but that's it. Uh, I didn't see any evolution in, in his game. Um, a lot of talk this week about how you moved up three spots in the lightweight rankings. Um, I'm just curious what you thought about that happening, given the fact that, you know, it's you were at one spot and you hadn't fought since then, and then this week you jump up again. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, bro. The, 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 the ranking is wild. It doesn't, it doesn't matter unless you got the belt. So it, it's cool moving up, this and that, being in the palm of palm and everything. But if you're not first, you're last, I guess. If you have uh, two belts over your shoulders after this fight, is it going to be a tough decision to decide which one you want to defend? Not at all, man. Not at all. UFC can tell me what they want to do, and we can do it, you know? So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of fun fights here at 45 now. Division is, like, kind of uh, coming up. I know they bring somebody else up here. So, with Diego, so that, that's a cool, cool couple of guys coming up. Uh, 55 is always fun to throw my name in the mix, but... First things first is uh, Ilya. You know, I got my hands full with him, and uh, you can ask me that question after uh, Saturday night. <laughs>